Here in this video, we're going to continue on with the processing of the 2D line in the 2D part of GeoThrust. We assume here that we've built a project, we've picked first breaks, we've run travel time tomography, uh, and generated some statics. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to create a shot order data set that we can then use as input to our stack queue process to generate a bunch of constant velocity stacks, and then we will pick some velocities, some stacking velocities. So I've actually run these steps already ahead of time, and so what I'll do here is recap how I generated these files. First of all, in the prep module, I generated a workflow, clicking on PS for processing sequence, and I generated a workflow starting with our raw shots, and in the actual job that I ran, I output a file called prep 2 do not say why, and I Gender, or I ran the, the process TX scale that will do apply spherical divergence correction, a single trace spiking decon, 160 millisecond length operator, and I applied the long wavelength statics that we have already calculated, and I applied the model based residuals that we already calculated as well. So these are the refraction based residuals. And I have to make sure in the last statics file I can do it in all of them if I want, but definitely in the last statics file I apply, I need to tell, uh, I need to describe which lay file I use. So that describes the floating datum. So this is what will be used to populate bytes 53 and 57 in this seg y file, telling the program basically where this data has been corrected to. So it'll take the upper layer in this lay file, and that's the floating datum, and that will be used to populate 53, 57. The NMO and the migration is done from this floating datum, which is essentially close to the topography, uh, and that's why we need to make sure we've populated the appropriate header in the SIGY file. The replacement velocity of 1900 will also be used in the stack cube as the default. Uh, it'll read that from the trace headers. Here we've also applied just a simple bandpass filter. Uh, it's filtering the data back quite a bit, but it'll allow us to pick velocities and an AGC. So I've pulled these modules over, uh, modified the parameters. Uh, when I did that, I also selected some nodes to run the job on, and I chose 20 cores per node. I hit apply to save that flow, and I hit apply to actually run that job and generate the shot gather. Since that's already been done, I'll simply close this. And the next thing I did was I opened up the VT cube and I went into the stack cube module and input the prep02 sig y we just generated and filled out these parameters appropriately to generate a file called stack cube 01 in my case. Just a point of interest, as in many places, uh, you can actually go to file load parameters and I can load in a .par file that has the same name as the job that I or the output that I ran, and it will populate the uh, parameters that I used to generate that file. So the final datum was taken from the actual highest elevation in the velocity model, in the near surface velocity model, and that will typically be above the highest uh, shot and receiver elevation. The replacement velocity was taken from the SIG wide trace header and we had to define a set of velocity ranges that we want to generate constant velocity stacks for. So in this case, we from 1,700 to 4,500 meters per second, every 50 meters per second, we, we generated a constant velocity stack. We used all of the shots. We used all of the, all of the offsets. We limited the data length to four seconds and uh, also decimated the output just to be every four milliseconds instead of a uh, finer sample rate. One important parameter is the stretch mute. The default is 100%, but that does not apply much of a mute. So you want to definitely apply a harsher stretch mute. In this case, I'm applying a 20% stretch mute that will be applied to the data before stacking. Again, I choose some nodes to run this on in the cores per node, and I ran that job, which took a few minutes, and generated that stack cube output. For now I'll close this. Once we've generated that, we can open up RMSVEL, 
the first time you open it, you'll need to open up the StackCube file. I've done that, open up StackCube 01. In my case, we can see that I already have the horizons picked, but when, I'll turn them off here with this icon here. So when you first see this, you'll see you have a bunch of constant velocity stacks that you can scan through. And you'll have uh, the poor looking semblance on the, on the bottom and on the right, uh, because the defaults will be at a, probably at a blank trace here and no, at one shallow time slice. So you can arrow through the different constant velocity stacks if you want, or you can specify a velocity here. And you'll see a bunch of different uh, panels that contain all the constant velocity stacks. What we are going to do is we are going to use this icon here to pick horizons. And uh, we'll be picking horizons, calculating horizontal semblance along those horizons, which will be displayed down here. And then we'll be picking a, a curve on the bottom here that will define the velocities along those horizons. In this case, I'm going to turn on the, the horizons and their associated velocities with what, I, what I've already picked. When we're picking in the horizontal semblance mode, we want to click on horizon down here in the bottom right. And we typically will assign the velocity to the floating datum as well. Um, this icon here will allow me to select a time horizon. I'll select this, for example. And you can see that we've defined this horizon. And in turn, that's calculated the horizontal semblance along that. And we can then assign a velocity picking along this maximum semblance, semblance maxima, to define a velocity uh, for this horizon. When you are defining these horizons, you can pick that on any uh, velocity panel you like, and you can uh, vary the velocity as you go across that. So the way we would do that, uh, if we assume we had a blank canvas here at the beginning, I would be picking a velocity strand. So I just click that icon at the top to put my in that mode. And then I would start here in the left and start mouse clicking to pick a, along the horizon, in this case, I don't see a lot there, but I get close to the edge, and I will right mouse click to complete that horizon, and I will see a horizontal semblance along that horizon. I would then pick down in the bottom here as well. I could pick along this, this horizon. It's not a great example of showing a lot of semblance continuity. Just for demonstration purposes, I get to the end there, and I will right-click to complete it. And now I've assigned a velocity along this curve. You can see that uh, there's a color associated with this horizon. And the slower velocities are the uh, pink to blue, and the faster velocities are the yellow to red. In this case, this horizon here does not uh, or, or we can tell that the velocities here are slower than the ones above it uh, because of the color. So I believe I should not have picked that slow on that semblance. So I could go back and modify that. In my case, since I've already, well, just to demonstrate how I could modify that, I could uh, activate move a point. could go down to this here, click on it to activate that line, that curve, and then I could drag the left mouse button. I could drag these points to the faster semblance. And then, then I'm choosing a faster trend there. And then I could right click to complete that. And that would assign a velocity that's a little bit more in line with what the velocities above it show. In my case, since I've already picked this, I'm going to actually delete. So this icon here will allow me to delete a strand. I'll go down and delete that strand to remove it. So essentially, we are able to assign 
velocities along horizons that we've picked here. We can see that the horizons do not need to go all the way across from left to right. We could also assign or pick velocities on the vertical segments. So we could move this splice line and pick a vertical a velocity along this vertical segment if we wanted as well. We can do both of those and build a velocity file using both bits, uh, build a velocity field using both bits of information. In my case, I'm just going to use the horizontal strands, the, the velocities I picked on these horizons. So uh, what I will do is build a velocity field from the image panels. And I'll do that again here anyway. Here we can see the velocity field. And if I'm comfortable with that, I can proceed forward, or I could apply some smoothing. I could modify the smoothing, the model smooth points, and I could apply some smoothing to this model. And what I can do now is I can actually extract a SIGY image. I'll click that icon. I'll just put an input quarter zero. I'll leave that to default at zero. And now I've extracted a SIGY image. Oops, I clicked it twice. I've ex extracted a SIGY a composite stack, basically, from the uh, constant velocity stacks and the velocity field I've generated. So we can see in this case it's 0, 2, uh, because I had extracted the SIGY earlier when I originally built this velocity field. We can see that the velocity field that was uh, built earlier, I will display that velocity field. We can see that that is uh, called XT02. Since I built that again, uh, that's why it's 0, 02. The previous one that I had built was 0, 01. Uh, so basically, we now have a velocity field that we're able to use to continue forward to uh, to use uh, to generate a stack, which will be the subject of another video.